Well, that docu series really was it a documentary? Was it just was it just a video diary from a couple who just feel sorry for themselves? It uh, uh, was released. It wasn't dropped. There's no such thing. We're not 12 year olds. Uh, it was released last Thursday. Another three episodes going to be released this Thursday. So what can we expect? Well, let's talk to Royal Biographer Angela Levin. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you so Good much morning. for joining us. I was absolutely gutted. I wasn't on air on Thursday to be able to discuss this. I was sitting at home ill, just watching the series and just sort of railing at the at the blank walls about it. Um, mm. I mean, I'm sure you've done plenty and plenty of telly and radio since, but just to get your quick thoughts, really, what did you make of the three episodes we've already seen? I thought they were overwhelmingly self-indulgent. I thought they were full of non-truths. They might have been Megan's truth, but I don't think they'd be anybody else's. And I also was furious that they got in about Brexit. Oh. That's why people are racist. Um, that their photographs were um, not taken when they were there. One was in 2011 at Harry Potter's yeah. um, beginning. And we had all that from the trailer, didn't we? Yeah. Um, and I just felt as well, going right back to 1817 when they were slaves, was just absolutely shocking and appalling. And um, I found it very, very difficult to watch it all, but I did. Oh, I mean, we did. I have to say, I had lots of people saying to me, well, why don't you just not watch it? Don't talk about it. Look, there are some, you know, the Kardashians. I don't talk about them. I don't know, I don't know who they are or what they do. I wouldn't recognise them if they walked into the studio now. Harry and Meghan, he is the son of the king. And, and you know, I mean, he's a world figure. Uh, when they do something like this, it's the biggest documentary, you know, mustn't use that word, biggest show on Netflix. You know, it's big news around the world. I can't ignore it. You can't ignore it. It's what we do for a living. I can't just pretend they don't exist. And it does have implications for the royal family as well. And this, this, this was the thing. I mean, you say very self-indulgent. There have been talk about how the, Harry, Harry and Meghan, some MPs are saying this, we understand some palace sources, we don't know who they will be, are saying they shouldn't come to the King's coronation in May if, they, if they're that angry angry and unhappy with the royal family they shouldn't be here in may do you agree yes i do agree actually what's the point you know they've got everything they want why are they sort of winding up the antagonism and the nastiness forget about it you don't like your um your father you don't like your brother or your sister-in-law um don't don't have anything to do with them just get on with your own life but i think if they do come it, they're going to take a lot of attention away from the king and queen and that's absolutely not right they'll find some way of, of doing it they will also make a big fuss about protection as they did about the queen's platinum jubilee and then we saw she lent them a sort of super safe car and when they came anywhere near london megan wound down the window and waved at everybody because she wanted them to see her that people can throw something into the car at any time so they couldn't have been that scared well yeah um, they not all pick and choose don't they yeah and i did think i just back just for a second to the the one we have seen the appalling insult she gave the queen with her phony a curtsy and her stupid voice afterwards hello her majesty you know she put, they put on a patronizing voice for a few seconds harry looked shocked harry's face was not happy and again i i, I can defend the fact that i think she was laughing at her, herself in the situation she was in but it just it felt it just felt the whole thing was just excruciating wasn't it the thing that i was most surprised by i mean absolutely beautiful me away was this couple you know wanting their privacy um the fact that they put out i mean they've got their children's faces again if they wanted to protect their children but no they use their children these private moments i mean private moment of your your child you're looking at a picture of your late mother for goodness sake you know um the first text messages and whatsapp or instas or whatever they, they sent each other their pictures on their first date pictures from I mean, yeah. why, why she was taking a photo when her husband uh, to be was proposing? I don't. What on earth's going it's on there? It's more important that the public know about it than what it is. This is a sort of unreal, hateful thing. And also, I mean, she has been so careful about the children's pr yeah. protection, but we have now realised it was to earn loads of money from it. Yeah. It wasn't because she was worried about that. The hypocrisy um, makes you feel quite sick, I think. Well, yeah, well, I mean, basically, you are selling your soul to the highest bidder. You're selling your children to the highest bidder. They don't need yes. to do that. It's not like it's sort of it's this or sweeping the streets. I would say sweeping the streets is a more noble uh, job with more self-respect and more use than, than what they do. It's the self-pitying. Do you think Do you think they are kind of... Well, there is a shelf life to this kind of 
of celebrity royal, isn't it? Because I was saying on the show last week, being a royal is about it being the same. So Kate might wear a different dress and the Queen used to always turn out in these amazing outfits and just, you know, just do the, you know, just, you know, she wanted her people to meet her, to see her, to, to feel an affinity with her. Um, but basically you do the same thing every time. You're just the same. Whereas celebrity has to be something new. They're selling more and more and more. They've given away so much about their mental health, talking about their families, the accusations, their children, the intimacy, in most intimate moments of their life. Well, when you're, when you're, you know, your boyfriend proposes and, you know, I mean, other than actually, I and mean, I'm sure they videoed the births, other than putting out the birth videos, how much more have they got left to sell? Well, that's the point. If you've got a hundred million pounds for it, you don't really need to say anything else, do you? But they won't. They'll just keep going on uh, because, you know, I think Megan is someone who's, that she never gets enough, whether it's money or whether it's yeah. attention and all those things. Um, but I, I think, well, the response in America was surprisingly low. Uh, it was, you know, and a lot of people have come on, I've seen them last night and this morning uh, on Twitter, how angry they are with them. Here these super privileged people, yeah. pots of money, and all they do is moan. And they're also very cross about their attitude towards the royal family. They might not be monarchists, but I think you don't have to be rude about um, William choosing a wife that fits the mould. Yeah. I mean, that's a bit... Yeah, I mean, all, I mean, you know, you know my views on the royals, but you say, say what you want about Kate, she gets the job. She does the job and she does it with her mouth closed. And that is part of the deal. But she understands duty. Oh, you know, all, all credit to her on that front. Wouldn't want a job myself, but she does it. She does her duty. Royal biographer Angela Levin, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'm going to give a final word on that to uh, Candice Hellsworth, who's been joining me all this morning online because affected by the weather. We'll talk about that in a few moments. But Candice, um, in terms of sort of selling their souls to the highest bidder, watching this, this, this program, these three programs on Netflix, I will be there on Thursday watching the next three as well who are we kidding um th th it is must watch but it's almost like watching a slow moving car crash isn't it do you think there's there's, there's anywhere else for them to go with this sort of selling their souls not really no i mean i think a reviewer from variety put it really well he said their lives have become a bit pinched and unimaginative i mean watching the last one you thought well there's nothing new here i've heard all of this before and how much more can they make themselves the brand? I yeah. just don't think there's much road left. No, not at all. No, and also, I do think at a time when people are really struggling with their own lives, paying their bills, I mean, it's been absolutely freezing overnight. People worry about whether or not they can afford to put the heating on. Having someone in a Montecito mansion moaning about, oh, some, someone was outside my gate taking photographs of me in my chauffeur-driven car. I mean, get over yourself, love.